Hello, everyone. I'm Contessa of Wrestling.com, joined by the first lady of Ring of Honor, Maria Canales Bennett. Bennett. Maria, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. We really appreciate you for joining us today. Obviously, it's a very exciting time in the wrestling world and, and, and the Ring of Honor specifically with uh, tomorrow, the premiere of the, the This Is Women's Wrestling women's uh, documentary uh, that will spotlight very much uh, your work with the women's uh, division in Ring of Honor, the resurgent women's division in Ring of Honor all throughout 2021. Um, I know I'm biased. I'm a fan of Ring of Honor and a fan of, 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 your, of yours. So it's really cool to see that really unfold uh, really all year long. We saw the, the Quest for Gold tournament. We saw the, the culmination of that at Alpha Floyd Dishonor. Now, and uh, all of that, that whole journey will really be told in a very a kind of, in a whole new way in this documentary. So to kind of right off the bat, what does it mean to have that work and that, that process and you know, just all of that, the whole journey told in, in a documentary kind of uh, format like, like that? So when I, uh, when we started talking about the tournament itself, the, my instant thought was I wanted to get behind the scenes footage as well. Um, and, uh, I thought of Brandon Bishop, who I had worked with on ASYTV.com. Um, he had done a documentary about my family a couple of times. We've done a few episodes with him. He's also covered other wrestlers as well um, and their journeys. And so I called Brandon and I was like, would you want to do this? And he's excellent because he's a fly on the wall, but he also can get shit done. So um, he's been involved with wrestling for years. So he had that um, right personality to be able to capture this. And not only that, but Zane Decker, who put this thing together, the editor on it, producer as well. Um, he just has an eye for what, what really captures a person and just watching it back again, like the, the moments and how that story was thread was really cool to witness. Um, and of course the entire ring of honor production was amazing working with us, allowing us to kind of get all the behind the scenes stuff and shooting over shoulders, which isn't always the most comfortable feeling in the world. Um, but to be able to give that to the fans, um, to give you a little bit more knowledge of what it takes to be a professional wrestler, the, the thoughts and feelings that we have going into a tournament, um, that is worth it. That's worth every moment of it. I can't. I mean, of course. I mean, it's just all that work and and effort, and just um, I'm really looking forward to really seeing that and that premiere, and being, for even more fans to be able to see that. So now we are a couple months removed from the culmination of the tournament, which was at Duff Ford Sauna. That's where Roxy defeated Miranda Elise. Um, you know, and again, having more time, kind of uh, apart from that, you know, more time for re re reflection. What would you say was the most uh, rewarding part of, of all that work and that as we've been talking about that that process and that journey of of rebuilding the women's position and having the tournament culminate in such a meaningful way at the pay-per-view so at the beginning of the year um when women were coming in to do uh, tryout matches um in essence and to really gauge if they you know belonged with the ring of honor style and ring of honor crew um you saw the nerves in them. You, you didn't really know them as a person, how they are at home at the very beginning, because, you know, you go into any company and you're nervous at first. And then watching them transition to these performers um, and watching them really do the type of wrestling they believe in, um, especially people like Trisha Dora and people like Roxy and Miranda Alizé. Um, you, you watch them transform throughout the entire year. And um, by the end of last year, um, they were ready to go. They were ready to dive into what comes next for this ring of honor women's division. And unfortunately I don't know what that is now, but they were ready. Um, I put these women up against any division at any time. Um, all of them are doing fantastic things. And um, that to me is the most rewarding part is to see them create their own opportunities outside of Ring of Honor now with that basis of going, OK, I did that and now I can grow. Definitely do want to touch on what might happen next, but I do want to circle back. You know, we were talking about the the most beneficial parts of it, the, of that growth of the performers, and that sounds like it might be also on the upside be a little challenging. The the first part of that of, of that that growth of seeing you know of that transition transition happening, but maybe other than that, what may have been some of the most challenging parts is obviously it's it's a torment. It's a, you're relatively rebuilding a division from. 
the ground up essentially. So what would you say may have been some of the most challenging parts of that uh, kind of all, all throughout that process? Stigmas. Um, everybody in wrestling, they come in with this idea of what they think wrestling is or what it has been in the past. And to push past that, to say to them, uh, even if you have a bad night, that does not make you a bad wrestler. It does not make you a bad person. So we will give opportunities over and over again to people that we believe in, that are good humans and that are working their butts off to do well out there in the ring. So um, getting past that initial, you know, that fear response and just giving people a platform and say, go perform. I already know you can. I've watched you in Podunk, Missouri, or I watched you down in Texas. I see your matches. I know what you can do. Now bring that here with the same confidence that you do in your own home promotions. Cause I want that wrestler. And I think we got there throughout the year. And so that was the biggest thing because I, I, I don't believe in that way of work. I do not believe that fear brings out the best performance in anyone. I believe that having a place that you can go and show your art that produces great performances. And um, that's what we were able to accomplish. I mean, I, I think that would, that would be beneficial to have that uh, mindset more, more common in, in wrestling. Cause I think even from a fan perspective, I feel like it's pretty easy to tell that a lot of that is pretty uh, prevalent of, you know, that fear based, like, Oh, I better go out and have a good match or I'm not going to get, you know, I'm not going to have a job tomorrow or you know, something like that. And we see that uh, in, in some companies around uh, the industry these days, but in a more positive way, uh, you know, we're talking about the, the, the benefits, the, or the most rewarding parts, challenging parts in a more general sense, uh, what does what does it really mean to you? Again, a couple months removed from it now. Uh, again, we're talking we're going to talk about the future in a minute. But from what has happened, what would you say may have been? Uh, what or I should say, what, what did it mean to you to really have, be have such an important part in uh, the the rebuilding of the women's division of having uh, the the tournament and the champion being crowned and and now again with the doc, the documentary to to spotlight that and to shine even more of a light on it. What does all of that mean to you? Uh, kind of looking back on it all now. I think it's a, a gift to the wrestling industry um, because now there are 15 women that came out of this tournament and about 22 women we worked with in general over the past year that are now out there performing. Um, and a lot of them have really made themselves into stars. So um, that's the most important thing that came out of it. The people that came out of it, people like Max, um, who at the beginning of the year, was just starting on their journey. And by the end of the year, really cemented what they're about. Um, people like Amy, who I think um, even grew more as a manager throughout the entire year, especially when she was able to connect with Max on such a level. Um, Maserati, who you will learn more about in this documentary and about her story. Um, and now, you know, you, you watch her matches and I, I feel like she's one of the greatest heels, um, that hasn't yet been tapped in this world. So the people are the most important part, the wrestlers. <clears throat> one of the most, uh, prominent wrestlers, you know, even talk about stars coming out of tournament, Roxy definitely already has that kind of, uh, that crossover success. We know that uh, we, we saw her pop up in impact. We know she was at the, the MLW blood and thunder taping. So of impact. Uh, obviously, she had a, a major, major match when she defended the Ring of Honor Women's Championship against Deanna Perrazzo. Uh, before we talk about more, more of the impact side of things, just that match in itself, you know, definitely being uh, a big, you know, another, yet another step in this, this growth for the women's division. I mean, even, even the time when Ring of Honor uh, is surrounded by really, really, uh, you know, just a lot of uncertainty. And to have that title match on a televised show, you know, that must have been felt like another kind of, I guess, feather in the cap to say, hey, like this is yet another, not culmination, but another kind of um, milestone in, in this uh, rebuilding woman's vision. Is that is that fair in saying? Yeah, Bobby Cruz. That's all Bobby Cruz. Um, as this uh, as this past year was winding down and we were thinking towards final battle, he wanted that moment in the ring um, and to have Deanna there. It was really full circle. 
um, from the way that she left Ring of Honor to being able to come back in this way. Um, it was a big deal to him uh, to make things right and uh, have that moment. And so you know, I give it up to him. He had fantastic ideas throughout this entire past year. Um, you know, as far as Chelsea coming in as a commentator, um, you know, so there was a lot of those moments along the way. Um, but yes, full circle moment of having Roxy on um, Impact Television defending her title against Diana Parasso. Um, but for me, it was funny because my segment was next. <laughs> I am standing in, I, I'm watching the match and the guys are like, okay, we got to go. We got to go. I was like, no, I'm watching. We, and they're like, and everybody is like journeying down the hall to go out for our stuff. And I'm like, but just one more second, one more second. Cause the match was so very good that I didn't want to pull myself away from that. But then of course I get in the ring with Deanna and I'm like, <sighs> it just felt so good to be out there. Um, she is one of the few people that actually make me consider getting back in the ring and wrestling. So um, to be out there with her, with her star power, with her talent, it was awesome. You you bring it up. So I have to ask, you know, if that's the match that you would think about, is, is it is that kind of a, a pipe dream or is that something maybe that, that could happen at some point if they are facing down at some point, you know, especially now that we know that she currently holds the Nirvana title. I mean, that, that would feel kind of like we're talking about full circle moments, I think. You know, I think yeah, I would, would like be terrible. That. I would be so <laughs> bad in the ring. I, it's been it's been three years, I think, since the last time I wrestled. So like my last match was at WrestleMania um, and sometimes I feel like I should just leave it there. Like that's, that's a good, that's a good ending. That's fair. But we do know now that you are uh, transitioning back into an on-screen role with impact. Now, I, myself, uh, I was just say before uh, the Roxy's match with Diana, again, all that, this uncertainty, not sure, not knowing what's going to happen with Ring of Honor. Then we see, a bunch of Ring of Honor stars, like real people really associated with Ring of Honor, you, your Mike Bennett, uh, Matt Taven, PCO, and Vincent pop up an impact. And suddenly it's like, oh, Ring of Honor is alive and well. And now like you've got this invasion thing going. I, I myself and many, many other Ring of Honor fans suddenly just were energized and, and, and reinvigorated saying, hey, like this is this is something's happening here. And we've seen that continue to play out here as well. So I guess to, to start with, what does it mean to you to uh, you have history of impact already, but now to kind of, um, I guess, bridge that that gap and, and have the, the Ring of Honor side of things and the impact kind of come together like that uh, in, in such a, dare I say, in an exciting way. What does that mean to you to be able to do that right now? You know, it's humbling because I, I think that every year now is like it's time that I haven't purchased. It's like I just keep going um, with this career and. Um, it, it's all a blessing at this point. It's um, a blessing to have people talk about it. It's a blessing that people were even excited to see me um, heading out there at this point. And um, we have a lot of years in the ring and in the group. So it's like, you know, from Mike, who has 21 years and Taven, who has somewhere around 50. Teen ish, I think. Um, and Vincent and PCO has a million. So it's like you, you just have a lot of years that um, in this group. And so to, to come out there and get the response that we did, it was like, okay, you know, that's, it's a humbling experience. It really is. And now, you know, moving forward here, you know, again, we're seeing you in a more of an on-screen role. It's something we, we really didn't get to see all that much in Ring of Honor. It was you're, you were very much involved behind the scenes and you did some commentary and some, some on-screen things here and there. But are you excited to be uh, in front of the camera more so these days? Or um, is it challenging kind of getting back into that side of things after not having done so all that consistently on Ring of Honor television uh, during your time there in the past year? Like, or... Just general thoughts on being uh, back in front of the camera with uh, impact right now. So uh, <laughs> it's funny in wrestling. It's always uh, how do you get out of it? You know, how, how do these wrestlers get out of it? And when I hold that microphone, I think to myself, I could be here forever. So it's like you just I love that feeling. Um, and to be able to come out and make a statement and, um, be surrounded with such talented people, 
It's fun. And when I'm not having fun anymore, when I'm not excited about it, um, then I'll stop. That's um, that was my cue in WWE. Like in WWE, my last match was at WrestleMania. And I remember walking out to the ring and being like, yeah, I'm done wrestling. I don't. It's just gone. Like that feeling has left my body. But managing, it hasn't. And helping the next generation, it hasn't. Whatever I can do to do those two things, um, and if I could do them simultaneously, perfect, um, that's where I belong. Um, I don't belong wrestling, but I really do enjoy holding a microphone and holding a pencil. So (laughs) uh, that's my ideal world. I'm worried to seeing you get to do that again here in, in Impact. So uh, at least we we don't know what's going to happen next with Rick Vonner. We don't, and seeing it today for the, from a famous fan perspective, we don't know what's going to happen next on the in, uh, Impact side of things. But uh, you know, again, be, being able to have that ideal mix there. Uh, what are your kind of at least short short and or long term goals here uh, with Impact? Again, again, not really knowing what's going to happen with Ring of Honor, but just kind of goals moving forward here, given the way that uh, things are going right now. Again, being back on Impact. Impact, uh, Ring of Honor, not quite sure there, but uh, and we, we were talking about the women's vision. So, go. I mean, do, is there any like, kind of crossover of these goals, or maybe just specifically, specifically with Impact, just what you're mm-hmm. hoping to do here uh, in the short slash long term future? So right now, it's all about um, building up Honor No More, um, making everyone's presence known. Everybody has a voice in this. Uh, Mike Bennett is he's been fighting pure style wrestling for the past few months up to almost a year. Um, You have Matt Taven, who's a former champion. You have Vincent, um, who's real uh, creepy and chaotic sometimes. Um, Then you have PCO, who isn't afraid of death. He's not human. Um, So it's about building everyone's story up right now, Uh, making sure everybody has a voice in the group. Um, and you know, as far as like for my family and personally, like I'm super excited to see Mike go against all these new guys that he hasn't necessarily wrestled before in impact. So, um, as far as my family, I'm incredibly excited about that. And I, I really hope that he gets that moment to continue fighting that pure style. I want to see another match out of him and Gresham. The two that they've had so far were freaking incredible. And I think that the third one would be just, yes. So I'm, I'm excited about those things. Um, will there be another opportunity for, um, working with another women's division? I don't know. Um, I do know that on like on a daily, like my feelings daily are that I'm missing something and I know that's what I'm missing. It was very hard for me to watch the documentary all the way through in one setting because I was just like, I want more time with them. I want to help them, you know, continue to grow and continue to be the stars that they deserve to be. And so for me, I still have that desire. And usually when you put that out there in the universe, it comes back to you. So whether it's something that Bobby Cruz and I um, end up working on together or whether it's a part of another company, I don't know, but I do know that the desire is there. I mean, Impact for many years now, Senna, I would say especially now, uh, has uh, been renowned for its its knockouts division for the for the what it has co- uh, contributed to women's wrestling. And now that you're there, uh, maybe right now I'm more on the manager side, but it does to me, uh, you know, seem like a pretty much match match made in heaven situation of you know you and, and your contributions to women's wrestling, Impact knockouts women's wrestling. You know, is there at least on, on your end, is there any interest? Uh, you mentioned maybe working on something you know in general, but like could you maybe see yourself working with impact on the end, you know, in a similar capacity as you do with Ring of Honor in the women's vision uh, and trying to kind of help as you as you were just talking about with the, the women's vision for Ring of Honor, kind of help some of these stars really kind of uh, come into their own in impact. So I think that the um, impacts division is in really good hands between Gail Kim and Mickey James and Madison. So um, I think that they have a lot of people that are fighting for that division and I'll do whatever I can to help. Um, And I think that for years, Gail Kim has really just, she's led the charge in women's wrestling and um, she's a humble human, but she deserves 
all the accolades in the world because of what she was doing in the past with Awesome Kong um, and everything she's done since. I mean, I remember being in WWE and all of us that were in WWE at the time, all of us divas looking at what the knockouts were doing and being jealous, jealous of the time, jealous of what they were able to do and how they were able to wrestle. So um, she's been a pioneer in this industry for years. And as the leader of the knockouts division, she does a fantastic job. So um, I'm just, I'm blessed to work alongside her in whatever capacity. Speaking of pioneers and all-time greats, we're recording this uh, on Thursday, uh, on Wednesday. We know that just today, Ring of Honor officially announced its, its plans to uh, launch and start announcing inductees in the Hall of Fame, something that many fans have been hoping to see for, for quite a while now, but that is now a, it will be a reality and we'll see uh, those inductees start to come to light quite soon. But as someone, who, again, who has really helped uh, and made meaningful contributions to Ring of Honor, what are your thoughts on the Hall of Fame and you know, if, if, maybe if you had to pick sitting here today, maybe some, maybe some, uh, some names that would most belong in, in that um, prestigious group. Uh, Sumi. Sumi, I think, would be uh, my number one of who deserves to be in the Hall of Fame as far as the women's side goes. Um, as far as the men's side, I think there's always the obvious choices of uh, Punk and Brian. Um, and I would add Joe and I would add Nigel to that. Um, there is a plethora of names that belong in the hall of fame for ring of honor and in the hall of fame for wrestling, um, in general. I mean, you put Sarah Del Rey in that, uh, list as well. Um, so I, I think that there are so many names that are going to be thrown around that deservably need to be thrown around because they, they have contributed so much to the industry. Um, not just in Ring of Honor, but everywhere. Talking about legends and greats, and obviously focuses on the past, but right now, even if Ring of Honor specifically, the future is a little unclear. Uh, Honor No More is really kind of keeping the the brand, the name, the spirit alive. And as a fan, I just kind of have to ask, like, they're just, they, it feels like there's something there. Obviously, we know the contracts and things, we don't quite know what's going to happen, but like, you're almost in a way it's like the group is indirectly like keeping the name alive. And like, it just feels like there's some kind of like crossover, like kind of waiting to happen there. So do you, would you want to see like if the opportunity becomes available, like to, to return to ring of honor and kind of bridge that gap and, and do something to kind of uh, generate buzz for, for both companies. If, if, if that becomes a possibility, because to me, that just seems to make sense. At least in your day. Yeah, you know, I think that anything is possible and I don't want to give away too much of what might happen or could happen or not give away enough. Um, I hope that Ring of Honor comes back better and stronger than ever. I hope that it continues to have a place in the wrestling world. So I don't know what capacity that is. Um, I haven't been involved with the rebrand. And so I don't know that much from the corporate side. Um, what I do have to say is that the response that has you know been achieved because of honor no more and showing up at impact has been incredible it's it's been such great buzz for the company and so i hope only good things for ring of honor and I, I mean, I, I couldn't agree more and very much hopeful about the future there, hopeful about uh, what Honor No More will achieve in impact and just move forward here. So with that being said, Maria, we, uh, we thank you so much for your time today. Uh, very much looking forward to the premiere of the documentary recording this on Wednesday. It'll premiere Thursday on the Ring of Honor YouTube channel. Uh, do you have any last words, anything you want, you want to plug before we get out of here? Uh, you know, I just... Uh... <laughs> Mike just yelled, it's awesome. <laughs> uh, I think that this documentary does a really good job of giving heart and soul to women in wrestling. I think that it shows the other side. It's an insider's perspective. Um, it pulls the curtain back just enough to let you know that these are real, true, uh, live human beings that are out there performing every night for you. And I have enjoyed watching it. Um, it was hard for me to get through it at first because I, you know, I feel for these women. I, I want them to achieve their best and I don't want to give too much away, but there's this one hilarious moment. That's one of my favorite moments in the documentary of Roxy. She, she's eating a bar before her batch 
And like, she doesn't realize a camera is on her and you just see her like turn beat red because there we are filming for this documentary. And she's just like horsing down this bar. But that's the reality. The reality is, is she's young and she's happy to be there and she's cute and she's fun. And that's every single one of these women in different ways. And that's what this documentary shows. It shows you the real life humans that are behind the characters out there. Absolutely. So that said, for all Ring of Honor fans, for women's wrestling fans, just good content fans, highly recommend tuning into the documentary. uh, Because it will be free. It's on YouTube. There's no reason not to watch it. Have to Uh check it out. Uh It's awesome. This is the extended cut. So it's a little bit more than you would have seen on television over the past weekend. So, um, you know, we we wanted to give you an extended cut. I think we could probably get six to eight episodes out of what we shot. Who knows? Maybe we'll do like a small mini series after this is all said and done. Um, But the footage is great. Everybody that worked on it is awesome. Big thank you to Bobby Cruz, who is my partner throughout the entire year, Uh, to Mike Bennett, who's my partner in real life, that he will watch the babies while I'm on all of these calls and meetings and all of the things that you have to do. Um, And just to the entire Ring of Honor production. Um, Thank you to everyone. And thank you for um, talking about this documentary. I think it's important. It absolutely is. And we thank you so much for your time today. Thank you.